Moving into the complex numbers. Okay. Um, part one, very well done. Good job. Uh, you're good with binomial theorem. That's not to be, uh, that's not surprising because it's extension one. When you got to part two, this is also pretty well done, but the place people drop marks was here. Remember I talked about fudge? Remember I talked about fudge? If you didn't use trigonometric identities, the result is given, right? So if I didn't see you using the Pythagorean identity somewhere, I was looking for one minus, uh, one minus sine squared to be replacing all those cos squared terms, then it was clear to me you weren't actually showing. You were kind of taking a shortcut because you knew where you were supposed to end up, okay? So you've got to use those identities somehow to get the second mark. Part three, two different ways to do this. Uh, they're both fine. You can either literally carry on from the last line of part two. You just got that result. So put in theta equals pi on 10. Just substitute it in, right? And you will see what comes out. Here is my substitution line right here. A lot of people went this path. Five times pi on 10 is pi on two. And we know what sine pi on two is, okay? But because it's a show question, I really was looking for you to do that right? And not just say, oh, it's a one. Ta-da, magic. I know you know it's a one. It says on the paper, it's a one. You've got to show me where that came from, sine pi on two. Alternatively, um, you could have done the substitution. This is equally fine, but a lot of people got to this point and they wasted time with general solution, which you don't know yet, right? So you ended up, it ended up being very inefficient. You can just say this, this is fine, right? One is sine pi on two. Like this is the reverse of the way I did it before, right? So if you've got sine of five theta, sine of pi on two, clearly taking the signs out of the picture is one of the solutions. It's one of them. You only need to show it satisfies, so you don't need to say it's all of these different cases. They're irrelevant. Okay, part four, um, long division or synthetic division, both fine, okay? Um, I think some people got mucked up because either way they went, they forgot that there were terms with zeros as their coefficients. So they forgot, um, they, they got the x to the four term, but they forgot the x squared term. And obviously that mucks up your entire division, whether you do it synthetic or long, okay? Um, so there was one mark there. Part five, um, the easiest way was to compare coefficients. So you can see the way I've done it, right? I took this four x squared plus kx minus one. If I square that, I ought to end up with the quartic component of my quintic, right? And there it is, right there. There's the quartic component. I can pick any of the coefficients I want. It just looked like the easiest one was these guys. It makes the, co the comparison very straightforward, okay? Um, but you could pick it other ways and you would have gotten that mark. Moving on, we're almost at the end. This was done poorly and I was kind of surprised uh, because this is a textbook question. It's a textbook question. Uh, and it does come up in the HSC quite often. You've been led all this way to be able to find sine pi on 10, which is quite an astonishing result. Um, I was looking for this kind of thing to be able to exclude the x minus one, right? Sine pi of 10 uh, can't possibly be equal to one. You didn't need to reason it, you just had to state it so that you could exclude this answer, right? Just like in um, Pythagoras, you exclude a negative result because you're looking at lengths, right? You always have to say why though, not, not an essay. Once you recognize, okay, I need to be solving this thing, the sine pi on 10, it mustn't be a solution of this, so it must come from over here, right? You just launch into the quadratic formula. That's all I've done here. Just make it a bit clearer. There we go. Here's my quadratic formula. I go ahead and solve. And just like before, I must exclude a solution, okay? I'm excluding this solution here, the negative one, because sine pi on 10, it's in the first quadrant. Um, you could have said first quadrant, you could have said acute, you could have said it with this inequality language that I have done. Any of those are fine, so long as you actually give me a reason for why it's not the case. Like you can't just say, cause I don't want it to be, right? Give me a reason why. Uh, and it didn't have to be long. You exclude that and that's where your um, second, second mark came from. Last part, uh, this actually, this is probably easier <laughs> than I intended. It was very similar actually to the Vietes results, the sum and product of roots before. I just want to point out, um, a lot of you got lazy at this point of the proof. And I understand, I get it. I understand why you got lazy, because who's got time to write all of that? Um, if you didn't want to write that all out, you really need to say that like, you've got to say something more than this. Like, I know what you mean. But that couldn't mean anything. Like really, it's like the sum of all alpha betas 
for, for, for whatever, who knows, right? If you want to say the sum of the roots two at a time, say the sum of the roots two at a time. It's a little bit messy, but at least I knew what you were talking about. And when you got this, it didn't just come from the answer that was given to you in the question. Okay.